Hello and uh, welcome to uh, our studio. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, we've been born in a very sensitive area uh, called the Middle East, usually unstable for different uh, kind of reasons uh, and popular in political discussions. Nowadays, uh, we've got an agreement uh, on Iran's nuclear pr program, fragile and dangerous according to uh, Israel. Uh, we've got ISIS spreading terror and fear, the Yemen uh, crisis as well, but at the same time, substantial quantities of, of uh, hydrocarbons in the area. Um, so how do you comment all this? Uh well, do we have an hour? Because I'm not sure we have an hour to comment on all of those things. But yeah, we are definitely seeing uh, a changing Middle East, an evolving Middle East. Uh, perhaps after the agreement with Iran, we're even seeing a new Middle East. Um, ISIS is an issue in the area. Of course, it doesn't have any direct, immediate implication towards Israel. Although in the Sinai area, ISIS did uh, join forces together with Hamas for their own interests. But it's not a secret that Israel has been uh, surrounded by different enemies. If you mentioned Iran, Regardless of the nuclear agreement, which I will touch in a second, we still have Iranian presence at three out of our four borders. It's Syria, we have Hezbollah in Lebanon, we have Hamas in Gaza. So three out of the four borders already have Iranian presence. Mm -hmm. As for the agree Iranian agreement, um, I think the two major concerns in Israel are one, that Iran was recognized as a power here in the region of the Middle East. And when you are recognized as such, you can have different kind of cooperations with different actors. The second matter of concern in Israel is the matter of inspection. And here, um, according to the agreement, uh, which is still currently learned, but it seems like it's a bureaucratic uh, and long process, which I'm not sure would eventually bear fruit. Um. Israeli Prime Minister uh, openly voiced his uh, opposition uh, to this agreement and of course this created some kind of tension between Israel and the US. Not tension but we know that the relations between the two countries are for the first time maybe uh, in a very uh, negative uh, uh, level. Um, do you agree that this deal will empower Iran in a dangerous way? First, I believe that the U.S.-Israeli relations are good relations on many levels, especially security, intelligence. Um, I can tell you from my experience that I participated quite a few times in joint exercises between the two militaries, and, and I've seen this with my own eyes. Um, as for the agreement, once again, when Iran will receive this recognition, then the doors of the Western world will be open to receive different kinds of cooperation. In that sense, we have to wait and see because we cannot predict you know, anything in the Middle East more than a few days ahead. We have to predict and see where is it heading. Will it respect the agreement or not? Last Friday, the spiritual leader, Khamenei uh, of Iran, spoke publicly and in his speech, he gave very interesting messages. He said, for example, that Iran will continue and support for Syria, for Lebanon, and for Palestine. What I understand, what I heard from this, is that Iran will continue to support financially and with doctrine Assad, Hezbollah, and Hamas. So of course, if this is true, this will have some implications in the area. Mm -hmm. um. Analysts uh, suggest that the U.S. stance uh, over uh, Iran has changed in a way that uh, reminds us Roosevelt's and Nixon's uh, strategy when they faced geopolitical problems. And that was uh, they turned a geopolitical uh, opponent into an ally, in a way. That has been like a, a slow uh, procedure. How, do, do you agree with that? I don't feel that I'm in a position to give grades to the U.S. Obviously, each president has its own foreign policy, and the U.S. have their own internal issues as well. We have to keep in mind that the Middle East is not the first and foremost priority, and it's understandable. In the Middle East, you know, the powers are changing so quickly. Just a few years ago, 
there were winds of hope and the world called it Arab Spring. After a short time, the world has learned to realize the spring doesn't really exist. There is no spring, maybe very dark winter. So I do think while uh, they have their own policy, at the end of the day, Israel and Cyprus are two countries, as well as other moderate countries in the area, that will have to somehow defend themselves in their own powers while monitoring the situation, while collaborating with each other, with each other and other moderate actors in the area. Mm. One of the area of concerns is that while there is a, a vacuum in foreign policy, then other actors can come into the arena. Um, finally, how do you see Cyprus, uh, what is the role of Cyprus in all this uh, for Israel and uh, for the stability in the area generally? This is my second visit to Cyprus and every time I'm amazed to see how similar the two countries are, Israel and Cyprus. I do think that the relations that have been growing stronger in the last couple of years, it's extremely important for, it's a win-win situation. In a changing Middle East, where so few countries are moderate, Israel and Cyprus are two countries that share the same values. Therefore, the room for cooperation is practically endless. Not only in energy, but different kinds of business. But not only that, it can be tourism, which is existing, but it can grow a lot uh, bigger, of course. But even in supporting each other, uh, Cyprus is a member of the EU. As you know, Israel is undergoing a very uh, extensive uh, BDS process. Mm -hmm. uh, many EU countries are uh, supporting, organizations in those countries are supporting the, these efforts and, and we can uh, be very happy to have Cyprus at our side and vice versa. Just last month, a Hezbollah uh, guy was arrested uh, in Larnaca. This was not the first time and I think this is a, a good indication one of the great dangers that are waiting for us in the area, and two of the mutual cooperation. Uh, we are also expecting uh, Benjamin uh, Netanyahu next week in Cyprus. Uh, what should we expect uh, from this visit? I think when the Prime Minister of Israel comes to visit Cyprus, it's a statement to Cyprus, it's a statement to Israel, it's a statement to other countries uh, in the area to see this kind of cooperation to understand that Israel is not alone, Cyprus is not alone. So I think it's a great opportunity for both countries. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.